Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss the DWA dynamic window approach planner. DWA is a popular and quite well used local based path planning algorithm. It is so widely used that it has a dedicated ROS package and is the default local path planning algorithm for the ROS navigation stack. We are going to run this DWA algorithm on the Husky AGV mobile robot, which is manufactured by the company Clear Path Robotics. So let's have a look at its simulation. All right, so here we have our Husky robot. The Husky is a mobile robot and it is placed in an environment where there are different obstacles. Here we have the RWS visualization window. On this window, we are going to see how the algorithm is performing. As we can see, the RWS visualization window is showing the nearest obstacles that are being detected by the sensors of the robot. Now we are going to give the robot a goal position, which the robot is going to try to reach using the path planning algorithm. So let's have a look at that. In the simulation, we could see that once we provided the final position and direction to the robot, the robot plans its path from the initial to that final position. The black line we could see was the global path that was being planned. Also, we could see different blue colored trajectories that were emanating from the robot. These were a set of candidate trajectories that were generated by the DWA local path planner. From these set of candidate trajectories, the robot chose the red color trajectory and was following that. And we could also see that the path planning algorithm was also enabling the robot to do obstacle avoidance. So now let us discuss its technical details and understand how the algorithm generates the candidate trajectories and how it selects the best one. All right, so the problem of motion planning or path planning can be divided into two parts, which are global path planning and local path planning. The global path planning is a more offline based approach where the robot can take its time to develop a path that takes it from the start to the end position, taking into account the static obstacles. Static obstacles can be buildings, walls, almiras, or even cabinets, basically the things that will not move in the surroundings. The local path planning is a more real-time approach where the task for the robot is to follow the actual global path that was generated before. In addition to that, the local path planner also avoids dynamic obstacles. Dynamic obstacles can be moving pedestrians, moving cars, basically everything that moves in the environment. The DWA planner dynamic window approach is a local path planning algorithm. This algorithm is quite efficient and is mostly used for mobile robots. If we consider any other path planning algorithm, let us say the RRT path planning algorithm, the path generated by the RRT algorithm is quite general in nature and can be used by almost any general robot. For instance, the path generated by the RRT algorithm can be used by a mobile robot 
or even a robot arm. This is similar to other algorithms as well like the A star and virtual force field algorithm. I have already made videos regarding these path planning algorithms. You can check these videos from the i button above. The DWA planner differs in the way that it generates the paths by taking into account the robot's configuration. Since it is mostly used for mobile robots, it takes into account the robot kinematics of these mobile robots. Robot kinematics is simply a mathematical model that is used to describe the position or pose of the robot. This mathematical model helps us to describe where the robot would be in the future time steps. For a general mobile robot, we can consider the case of 2D robot kinematics. Given the X and Y coordinate system and the robot represented as a circle facing in this direction, the complete robot pose or state in terms of this coordinate axis can be represented using three parameters which are x, y and theta. x represents the x coordinate, y represents the y coordinate and theta represents the angle the robot is facing with respect to this horizontal axis. Assuming a coordinate axis fixed on the robot where the x axis points in the direction the robot is facing, y-axis is perpendicular to that, we apply general velocity commands in these coordinate axes. The velocity along the x-direction is represented as u, the velocity along the y-direction is represented as v and the rotational velocity about the z-axis is represented as omega. The effect of these velocities on the initial state of the robot can be represented using the equations as given over here. The x, y and theta on the left side of the equations are the final state of the robot. The x, y and theta on the right side of the equations are the initial states of the robot. To the initial heading or theta of the robot, we add omega times the sample time to get the final heading of the robot. To calculate the final x and y, we first represent the u and v from this coordinate frame to this coordinate frame. This is done using the mathematical expression that we can see over here. Then this term is added to the initial x and y to give the final x and y of the robot. Now one thing to note over here is that the acceleration of the robot in these equations is assumed to be zero. The robot does not have any acceleration. By using this mathematical model for the motion of the robot, the DWA planner generates different candidate trajectories. Out of these candidate trajectories, one trajectory is chosen which the robot follows. Now, any one of these candidate trajectories can be discretized based on time intervals. Each trajectory is composed of different time instances, let's say T0, T1, T2, which goes on till Tn. For each of these time instances, we have a robot pose. Given a range of acceleration, we sample an acceleration value from this range. For the first time step, we assume that the velocities increase based on a sampled value. For the rest of the time intervals, we assume a constant velocity model. This change of velocity in the initial time step based on sampling is what helps generate the different candidate trajectories as we can see over here. The candidate trajectories that do not satisfy the velocity limits are simply discarded. Also, the candidate trajectories that pass through any obstacle are also rejected. From these remaining candidate trajectories, we select the best trajectory based on an optimization function.
Based on the original paper, the paper describes that the optimization function should consist of three terms, which are target heading, clearance and velocity. The target heading term gives more values to those trajectories that follow the global path well and help the robot reach its final goal. The clearance term of the optimization function penalizes those candidate trajectories that are in close proximity with the different obstacles. The velocity term in the optimization function rewards those candidate trajectories that help the robot move faster. Apart from these terms, we can add more terms to the optimization function based on practical use cases. Other terms that can be added as well are oscillations and spinning. Oscillations penalizes those robot trajectories that oscillate the robot between some two different positions. The spinning term penalizes those robot trajectories that make the robot spin more than it makes the robot move forward. Based on the value of the optimization function, the best of these candidate trajectories is chosen. And that chosen candidate trajectory is then followed by the robot. Once the robot gets the best trajectory, it follows it for some time interval and then again recomputes all the different candidate trajectories. Then from the newly generated candidate trajectories, the best trajectory is chosen. That trajectory is again followed for some time interval and then again new candidate trajectories are generated. In this way, the generation and following procedure keeps going on until the robot reaches the final position. This form of recalculation helps the robot deal with the dynamic environment. Alright, so this is it that we had to discuss for the DWA path planner. Now let us have a look at its code. Alright, so the code that we are going to discuss is from the official DWA planner ROS package. All the code that we are going to discuss is already uploaded on GitHub and the link to that would be in the description box below. The code is written in C++ and there are a lot of files that contain the code for the DWA planner. We are briefly going to look at it, some of its important points to understand its implementation. In the constructor function, we can see that the optimization function is being initialized. Here we can see the optimization function contains the oscillation costs, the obstacle avoidance based costs, the goal reaching costs and a lot of different costs as well to make the robot behave properly. Let's have a look at the implementation of some of these cost terms. First is the oscillation cost. The oscillation cost works by checking these different conditions and based on these conditions, it determines if the robot is oscillating or not. If the conditions over here are satisfied, then a negative 5 score is returned, otherwise a 0 score is returned. Next is the obstacle cost function. The obstacle cost function makes use of the cost map to generate the obstacle cost. First, the code checks if there are any trajectories that have an obstacle in their path. If they do, then a negative score 6 score is returned. Otherwise, the trajectories are scored based on the cost map and that final cost map score is returned. For the goal cost, the trajectories that go off the map and the trajectories that do not have a clear path to the goal are penalized and the rest of the trajectories are scored based on their distance to the target this final cost is returned as well. The trajectories are also scored based on the motion of the robot. If the robot moves back or rotates too much, then a penalty score is applied to that trajectory. After generating the optimization function, we are also generating a generator. 
this generator is responsible for generating the different trajectories. This next trajectory function over here calls the generate trajectory function, which in turn generates the different trajectories. As we can see, the first step of the generator is to generate the maximum and minimum velocity limits based on the acceleration limits that we already have. Then the generate trajectory function generates the different trajectories. This compute new velocities function is responsible for generating the new velocities for the first time interval. The compute new positions function is responsible for generating the positions in the trajectory for the later time steps. Finally, in the find best path function, we initialize the generator as we saw before, and then we compute the final best trajectory from all the different trajectories that we generated. The best trajectory is found by iterating over all the different trajectories that we generated and finding the one that has the best optimization cost function value. Once the best trajectory has been found, then we have the different visualization functions to visualize the different candidate trajectories that we saw before. Finally, we update the different class variables with the best trajectory that we found and return that best trajectory. Then based on this trajectory, the robot gives commands to the motors to move the robot appropriately. All right, so this is all that we had to discuss for the DWA path planner. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.